Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Sorry, my thumb hit the mic stand there. My name is KPZ. You're here on the home of the Slightly Above Average Ship Review. Got another Tech Tree Spotlight for you today. The Italian Tier 8 Battleship Lepanto, also known as the Pants. Anyway, we're on Hotspot. We are top tier. Couple of Palmers. Uh... On the enemy team, got to watch out for. But we are off in Lepanto. I want to let you know I built the pants out as a secondary build. Um, was there another tier 8 ship here? Nope, just a couple of Pomerns. I think we have a Pomern on my team as well. So we're doing a secondary build like we did for all the Tech Tree ships. So that means I got Palo de Ravel. I've got a full secondary emphasis for my skill choices and everything, except for one thing, which we will talk about in the port. Main battery range, just over 16. And, or 17, pardon me. <laughs> and we're going to try to get in up close. I hope everybody had a great Veterans Day. I had a great Veterans Day as a veteran. I uh, want to say, if you are a veteran and you are not in a fleet... I have a fleet called the Veterans Gaming Clan. It is not specifically my clan. I'm a member of the clan. And they gave me permission to open up a fleet in World of Warships Legends. So if you're a veteran, you play on Xbox, you're a team player, you are welcome to send me an invite or a message and join my fleet. You can just message me here or leave a comment with your... Uh, Xbox handle, and I will get a hold of you through the game. All right, there is an enemy destroyer, Summers CE. So we know that guy's a front runner. Uh, and I really love how this Udachi, and let's talk about this Udachi, folks. I know he thinks he's doing the right thing, but all he just did there was screen me from almost all those other ships. Except for the Vanguard, which is being shot at by other people, so it's still visible. So, again, I know the Udachi player thinks he is making the right moves. He is not making the right moves, in my opinion. All right, here in the pants, we see all these torpedoes coming at us. Check out this slick maneuvering. Can you believe that I'm going to dodge all these torpedoes, folks? Cranking hard on the thumbstick, but yes... We managed to dodge them all. Fire up the sad trombone for the summer CE driver, who's already dead. We hit him with a salvo of HE, and then I think a cruiser next to me lit him up, and he is at the bottom of the ocean. Now let me show you something, folks. This is called a push, and I'm about to push right through this cap and push out into the enemy team, and me doing this, in my opinion is the thing that flips this side of the map for our team. On the other side of the map, uh, our team is getting their ass handed to them. That's fine. We're just going to push in. Italian ships don't have great armor. They do have a lot of heals, though. Even though we're not using the total heal profile, we are just going to push in and get our secondaries into range and let them do the work. In doing so, we will get the assisted base cap of this cap I think it's Charlie and salt that away and we're going to start spamming HE at the Vanguard now one thing to note Italian HE is a low fire chance we do set a fire there but I think it's definitely up for debate whether or not you're going to run HE also as you can see the turrets get knocked out very easily and so we will cover that in the port review of the ship. But very, very squishy turrets. Generally squishy armor for a battleship. But you make up for that with SAP secondaries, which as you can see, are taking no shorts, as we used to say back in the 80s. Uh, continuing to fire, we're doing a little bit of stealth firing, although we're spotted, so I mean, it's not really that stealth. But we're in our own rolling smoke. And our secondaries are firing it up. We're going to aim a beautiful shot, I thought, at the Iowa until it left the gun barrel and I realized it was HE. I thought we could have pretty much punched his ticket right there. 
So that was truly unfortunate for yours truly. I'm just going to ignore the Vanguard. I'm going to ignore the Cruiser, which is a Cleveland. And uh, that'll be a repetitive theme here at some point. And instead I'm going to focus on the Iowa. I pushed in. I determined the Iowa is the target I'm going to take out. And gosh darn it, I am going to do it. All right, firing up into the superstructure there. He hits me really hard uh, with his rear turret. If there was one thing I wished, it would be that I wouldn't have taken that damage. Uh, because I think eventually that's going to be our downfall. But that being said, the Iowa is taking a ton of damage from our secondaries. And we're just watching it count down. By the way, off screen, I finish off the Vanguard with my secondaries. And so we are going to aim here at the Iowa and get him down to the nub. And now I'm going to turn hard to the starboard and continue to let my secondary shoot at the Cleveland, which is doing Cleveland things that being super annoying. And it said I'm going to go all out to get this rear turret on target. There it goes. And there goes the Iowa. Kill number two. Turning my attention to the Cleveland, which we've driven out of the cap. We hold the cap area. And maybe on the mini-map here, you'll start to see my teammates let me down. At this point, I thought, we have the match in the bag. We've only lost three ships. The enemy team has lost five ships. I just punched the Cleveland very hard in the face. And I think I can take the Cleveland out before dying. But I'm going to have to be smart about how I do it. All right, we're going to use another heal right here. We're turning to get this last turret on target. He can set me on fire from any angle, so I might as well do maximum shell output while I still can. All right, so there goes my salvo. And as you can see, he's doing a pretty good job dodging, but we did get a solid hit there. By the way, in the midst of all this, we're well over 100,000 damage. Now, going quickly to WoW's builds to read you the damage record. 293,363. We won't approach that, nor will we approach the base XP record. 3,926. The Lepanto, by the way, was an Italian ironclad built for the Regia Marina. Uh, laid down in 1876. Launched in 1883. Uh, sold for scrap in 1915. Here we did a little bit of um, screening ourselves with our smoke screen. It's going to give me time to recoup a little bit from being burned down by the Cleveland. Of course, the Udachi behind me can't be bothered to go out and spot in front of me. Instead, he's kind of drafting in my smoke screen, which is great and everything. But your teammates need to understand how to interact with Italian battleships. When the Italian battleships are using their rolling smoke and their fighter plane to try and spot the enemy, maybe you could help them by spotting the enemy for them. But the Udachi player doesn't do that. Strike number two, in my opinion, in that he's not a very good player. All right, continuing to shoot at the Cleveland, and I'm turning away, and at some point I'm just going to say, you know what, all of my teammates that are behind me you can shoot at the Cleveland because you're not helping me kill the Cleveland. So you can kill him. I'm going to go focus on some other ships here. I think this is going to be one of my last salvos. One of maybe two. I said, yeah, I'm just going to go behind the island or whatever. Uh, there it is. And it's not going to do a whole lot. And then again, mystifyingly, um, we don't get a lot of hits, but mystifyingly, the Udachi... Instead of keeping the Cleveland spotted, he follows me behind the island. And at this point, I am just utterly flabbergasted as to what this guy thinks he's doing. Because he's not doing any destroyer things. He screened me in the beginning from the enemy ships with the smoke screen. He drafted in my smoke screen and didn't spot the Cleveland. There, instead of keeping the Cleveland spotted for the second time, he went behind an island. So he's not contributing anything that he thinks he's contributing to this match. And in the meantime, our lead has totally evaporated. And right now, it's four on four. 
So the radar's up, and I get that he doesn't want to get hit by that in open water, um, which is why he said, I've been spotted and fired out a bunch of torpedoes. But he is not spotting the enemy still. And while I understand him turning back here, the smoke screen does no good. It's radar. It goes through your smoke screen, you dodgy driver. And all the time, my good, close, long-time personal friend, Vaz Vegas complains about Xbox players. Vaz, this one's all you. That guy's a PlayStation player. And he doesn't know what he's doing. And he's been around this game for a while. He has to be. To either have the resources to, or to have gotten the Udachi in the first place. And he literally made four or five plays now that just don't make any sense. All right. Got a Kansas over there. I have given up on the Cleveland because of spotting. And so now I'm going to turn my attention to whatever is in the smoke screen. And as you can see, uh, we have 134,000 damage. Our, one of our two kills did come with our secondaries in a ship that I was largely ignoring. Uh, but our team's behind the eight ball right here. So Yudachi finally doing something right, going into the alpha cap and flipping that cap. That's good. But pay attention to what he does after that, because it's not going to be good. Alright, continuing to wait for uh, the enemy ship to come out of the smoke screen. <clears throat> I feel pretty confident just one salvo. I think this is Kututsov, maybe. I feel confident one salvo on a cruiser, we can take him out. Um, just waiting for him to pop out here. And I'm like, when is the smoke screen ever going to end? Good grief, he's not that powerful. And then all of a sudden I see the Kansas and I'm like, I know I have to take out the Kansas. So immediately shoot into the bow plate of the Kansas. We lose another fragile turret. There goes the Katutsov. We will hit our rolling smoke, which doesn't do a lot of good, unfortunately for me. Um, we did get the high caliber metal against the Kansas. And so at this point, I am ignoring Katutsov. I just want him spotted for my secondaries. And we are turning in. And in a minute, as we get a Confederate medal, we're going to hit the Kansas with the rear turret. Now, we'll hit him with the front turret and take him out. And then, we're going to get killed by Katutsov. All right. So it's a one versus three. You're going to see you're here right there in the background. The Kututsov is going to eat the torpedoes from Yudachi. And here's where the colossal mistake gets made at the end of the match by the Yudachi player. What he needed to do was move to intercept the ship that is capturing Delta and just capture Delta. Why? Because he can't win by capping. At this point, this destroyer player has to kill the enemy ships to win. So you're going to watch him futilely go around and cap behind them which makes no difference to the match. He should have moved to contact with the ship in Delta. He's a destroyer. Certainly he's fast enough to do that. Where do you think he's going to go next? Hmm, maybe Charlie? Move to Charlie is what you should have done. Torpedo the enemy ship. And then at the very least, we'd have a fighting chance. But instead, he's going to let the enemy cap uh, Charlie or whatever the, the blue one is on, on the left-hand side of the screen. And as a result, we're not going to win this match. While we are watching my sinking corpse and the futile attempts of Yudachi to do nothing, let's go look at a stat comparison. All right, let me uh, do some stuff here really quickly. I like all that stuff. We're going to add in secondary battery range, and we're also going to add in C detectability. All right, so we are comparing uh, all of the battleships of Tier 8. They took off the lines, so you don't know how many there are. I'd say it looks like there's about 25 or so. Hit points, uh, number one is Sovetsky Soyuz, 88,100. And then we're looking for Lepanto. Uh, looks like it's about 10 or 12 down the page, 75,900. Reload of the main battery, number one, uh, tied at 25 seconds, Awami, Republic, and Marlboro, uh, Lepanto, 
Scrolling, 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 second from the bottom. 35 and a half seconds. The worst reload is Minnesota at 34. Armor piercing damage. Uh, ARP, Musashi, and Musashi are number one at 14,800. And we'll go scrolling down for Lepanto. It is last, tied with Marlboro at 11,000 for the armor piercing damage. Sea detectability, the most visible ship is Zumo. The least visible ship is Alsace and Temeraire at 15.3. Lepanto, 15.5. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, sixth place in detectability. Secondary battery range, number one, Ruprecht, seven and a half. Uh, and the worst is Zumo and Musashi and Maine and a bunch of other ships at five. Let's go looking for Lepanto. It's in the middle of six. So that is your stat comparison for Lepanto. All right, here we are on the defeat screen. We finished second on the team, three medals. Three big kills. We actually had something like 176,000 damage. A good game to the enemy Palmer. But I think the the uh, Yudachi player, who incidentally is going to be reinforced in his belief that he was doing the right thing by finishing at the top of the board, he should have moved to kill Lepanta or moved to kill the Palmer uh, in that cap circle like I talked about. And he didn't. And I know he thinks he's a good player because he finished at the top of the board, but he misplayed that. We could have won that match. Anyway, we got a Confederate and a high caliber and a bunch of damage. Here in the port, taking a look at the ship, we went with secondary battery mod 2, damage control system mod 2, concealment system mod 1. On second thought, we'll get back to that in a minute, and uh, secondary battery mod 3. Uh, going back to this mod slot, I wouldn't blame you if you put on target acquisition system. Especially because the rolling smoke and wanting to get more visibility for your secondary battery. Um, so I may change that at some point. Uh, incidentally, this is a fully upgraded ship. Alright, going to the loadout. Four charges of the repair party. Three charges of the exhaust smoke generator. And I ran the catapult fighter instead of the secondary uh, targeting simply because I think this ship is weak and it's AA. It's deceivingly good. Let's put it that way. Uh, we were running the rare battle booster, the standard permanent camouflage, and the two-year strong flag. Here in the specs, 75,900 hit points, and a really nice 51% torpedo damage reduction. I think that's pretty nice. Um, moving on to the artillery, three quad turrets, 381 millimeters, 17.2 kilometer firing range, 31.2 second reload, 30 second turn time, HE shells, 5,400 max damage, just a 24% fire chance, and the AP shells, as earlier stated, 11,000 max damage. So I can understand why you would want to run SAP, and I wouldn't blame you if you ran SAP on the ship. All right, looking at the secondaries, I tried to move on there but failed. Uh, range of both nine and a half kilometers. They were shooting SAP only. The first set of 12 by 290s reloads every 4.1 seconds, does 2,000 damage. The second set of 6 by 3 152s reloads every 5.8 seconds, does 3,800 damage. AA defense, just looking at this number, you think it's in the 80s, it's good. It's very short range, and there's no one set of guns that does a ton of damage per second. Your best secondaries are those dual purpose, uh, best AA, pardon me, is the dual purpose secondaries, which do 162 damage per second and have a range of 4.1 kilometers. Uh, maneuverability, 30.4 knots, 910 meter turning circle. 16.7 second rudder shift time. Concealment, 13.3 on the surface, 11.2 from the air, 10.6 when firing in smoke. Taking a look at the stats, we have played 15 matches in the pants and have a 60% winning percentage. Main battery accuracy, a disappointing 35%. Kill death ratio, 0.9 despite the last game, which was our best game. 
in terms of kills and max damage. However, this build did shoot down, is that 14 or 16 airplanes in the previous match that so didn't make the cut. So um, that's why I built it the way I did. I think you'd be targeted by uh, carriers. All right, Below Water Citadel got this weird slant thing going on there. Whether that acts as a turtle back or not, who knows. Turrets and barbettes, not heavily armored at all. You see they got knocked out very easily. The turret face is heavily armored, but they are not sloped. So do not count on these things to be durable in any way. You do have an armor belt of up to 350 millimeters there at the waterline. So whatever protection that may give you is great and everything. Torpedo protection, as we mentioned earlier, is pretty solid. Your bow is 32 millimeters. You do have some sort of an armor belt between 60 and 80 millimeters here, but it will not do much for you, especially at this tier. And that is the armor profile of the pants. All right, I'm getting a crank call. Let me turn that off. All right, here we're looking at the Commander Arpeggio Haruna and uh, uh, Von Hipper. Um, base trait reduces the reload. They already nerfed this, you bastards. And we went not the one for nuisance, porcupine, uh, firefighter, properly meticulous, and fight fire with fire. Your mileage may vary. You might build the ship differently. Let me know in the comments. That's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe below. I'll see you in the next time on the home of the Slightly Above Average Ship Review. Thanks for watching, everybody.